The first order of business that I'm going to do here is I've cooked some bacon. Okay, I use bacon ends and pieces. I don't use regular bacon. I think regular store-bought bacon is fairly pedestrian, not enough meat, not a whole lot of flavor. I've reduced this bacon down. I'm going to crisp it just a little bit longer, but I'm not going to make it totally crispy because then into the drippings, I'm going to add some smoked andouille sausage and I'm going to brown that too. So hang on tight and I'll be right back. As you can see, the smoked andouille sausage has been lightly browned and I'm going to turn the heat down. I'm going to remove this sausage and put it on the plate straight with the bacon and then I'm going to lightly brown the pork. Now I know you're looking there going, man oh man, that's a lot of fat and yes it is, but we're not using all this fat in the recipe. Okay, the fat helps the pan deglaze itself, get those brown bits off the bottom. Okay, yes, it's a lot of fat. Okay, but we're not going to use it all. Okay, and nobody ever said that this dish was a diet dish. Okay, this dish has multiple levels of flavors for multiple kinds of meat. Okay, and we're going to get it on. So I'm going to get the pork in here and brown that up, and then we'll be back for the next step. All right, the pork is lightly brown now, and the next step is to brown up the beef. So I'm going to remove this from the skillet and brown up the beef, and then we'll move along. All right, the beef is nice and lightly brown, and I'm going to turn the heat off. I'm going to remove this beef from the skillet, add it to the plate with the pork, and then saute our onions and garlic, and we'll move forward. Okay. The garlic has been sautéed for about two minutes, getting lightly golden brown. So here goes some onions. Okay. I'm going to reduce these onions. Okay. It looks like a lot, but it's really not. Between one and two roughly sliced onions. I'm going to reduce them because this is going to get added to the peyota for another level of flavor. This dish is all about levels of flavor. All right. So, I'm not even going to add salt, okay, to help wilt these onions because there was enough salt in the bacon, there was enough salt in the sausage, okay, and there's probably enough salt in the pork that I used as well. So I'm just going to turn this over lightly and let the salt that's in the drippings reduce these onions and then I'm going to move over to the next move on to the next step. All right, this is where I want the onions to be. This was two large onions roughly sliced up. Most of their water has been released and they've reduced. They've just just started browning up and I'm going to remove them from this pan. And we're going to build us peyota beef stew. All right, guys. We're going to build us some Brazilian peyota. Okay. These are fresh black beans. I soaked them for 24 hours in salt. And right now, we are going to build this stew. Right here is the browned beef and the browned pork. Okay. See, most of the grease ended up on the plate. Okay. There we go. Just going to mix this in lightly. Okay. There you go. Just move it around lightly. Okay. There we go. And to this, bacon and the smoked andouille sausage. Okay. Okay. There we go. And we're going to mix this in. Just give it a light toss. There we go. Get those beans up from the bottom. Okay, this is a six quart slow cooker. You could do this recipe in a Dutch if you wanted to, but it's not necessary. And to this, the onions and garlic. This dish is all about flavor. I've said it before. Okay, this dish is all about flavor. This is not your American style beef stew with stew meat and mixed vegetables like carrots and corn and onion. This is completely different. Okay and it's completely delicious. 
So we work from the bottom to get some of those onions and garlics to settle in. There we go. Bring the beans up from the bottom. Get a good mix. All right. Plenty of garlic, smelling good. And to this, I'm gonna add some bay leaves. Okay, about four bay leaves. Okay. And then we need something to cover this. Now, a lot of recipes just say cover with water. And I, I think that's a little bit pedestrian for this recipe. So I'm going to cover this recipe in beef stock. You could use chicken stock, but the beef stock just adds a richer, richer flavor to this recipe. Okay. So this is four cups of beef stock, which just makes it. And I'll open up another. This is organic beef stock. Here we go. And you just want to cover. Okay. And that's really about it, guys. This is a really simple recipe. <coughs> Excuse me for coughing. <coughs> Excuse me again for coughing. Okay, so right here, this is about two containers of beef stock that I'm using to cover. <coughs> Excuse me, damn. And this is going to take about eight hours to cook. Let's give it a good stir. There we go. Get everything mixed in. All you got to do is just turn that spoon, really. Don't even have to stir. Just turn that spoon. And this is it. This is Brazilian feota, black bean and beef stew. This is going to take six to eight hours to cook. And when it's done, I'll see you right back here. It's been about four hours now, and the stew is getting really nice and rich and thick from that beef broth. Look at all that meat. Look at those beans, the onions. Everything is really, really just tender and coming together. Now, usually this stew is known for turning a light to medium dark purplish in color. And that still might happen here as the liquid reduces. But I soaked my black beans for about 24 hours in salt water. And that takes a lot of the coloration away. But it also takes away a lot of the gas. So that's why I do it that way. So this stew might not come out purplish, but it's going to come out delicious. So it's been about four hours. And I'm going to add a little bit of oregano. Okay. Fresh crushed oregano. Okay. Ugh, smells good. Okay. And I'm just going to let that marry into the stew and mix it around because this is going to be cooking for about another four hours, six to eight hours total. Okay. There we go. And just to impart a little bit of acid, a little bit of red wine vinegar, just a touch, about uh, a tablespoon, just to import a little bit of acid into this dish. Ah, oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. So rich. See that? Look at that. Oh, my. I can't wait to dig into some of that meat. Okay, so mix it around a little bit more. And about another four hours. And then we're going to plate up. Okay, guys. So there it is. Feota. Brazilian black bean and beef stew okay all the different kinds of meats the black beans some white rice usually served with long grain white rice but in this case I'm using arborio rice served with side dishes of cilantro and green onion and usually with orange slices and a nice cocktail but I'm not in the mood for a cocktail and I'm not in the mood for the orange slices so I'm just gonna do the cilantro and the green onion but this is it. It's tender. The meat is just falling apart. It's fragrant. It's flavorful. It's delicious. I hope you try this recipe. I'm glad you tuned in to watch it. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Okay, guys. So there you have it. Brazilian feota. 
the national beef stew dish of Brazil, okay? Bacon, sausage, pork, beef, black beans, onions, garlic. It's all delicious. It's a multi-flavored, it's a multi-layered, multi-flavored stew. It's just delicious, okay? And for another great Brazilian recipe, you should check out Banana Baby Girl because she's going to make another Brazilian recipe because that's what we collab together to do here. In the meantime, if you enjoy beef stew, whether it's a cold winter's night where you live or even if it's not, make this Brazilian beef stew feota. You'll love it as much as I've learned to love it. I want to thank you for stopping by. I'll see you on the next video. Take care.